Hello and happy Friday. Welcome to a weekly bench update. Take a look at what do I got going on in the shop, which is a current build, upcoming build, and we're going to take a look at some stash ads that I've accumulated over the last month or so. So let's get into her. First up is the current build, which is part of the Mad Gasser group build. That is my 54 panel Chevy. Uh, this is the way she's sitting right now. Not much. Kind of started working on the wheel wells. Probably go with the, you know, matching that slant there in the rear. But I'm going to have to get the whole entire rolling chassis done up and mocked into place so I can really tell where I'm going. You know, normally would go with a radius, but that just seems like that radius would get real high up there. The upper line is actually the interior tub line, and that other one penciled in there is to match the corners. So it seems like it'd get real high up there, but we'll see what happens once we get the rolling chassis going. And some other body work that's going to need to be done is here getting the, the hood to fit as well as along that windshield like those holes just creep way up in there and we're gonna have to get those filled make that look a little better looks like it's got a couple of chunks missing and those come from them hood hinge locations they just kind of crept way too far up so we got that to look forward to and then the chassis it is getting there basically got uh, most of the chassis together and then it's the rear axle did a bunch of seam work to it so those parts are ready to go and then we can start getting a little farther speaking of seam work working on the engine here this build I'm trying to do completely box stock kind of box art so there's some things I got to work around to do the best I can. You know, a few little things that make me want to leave the box box stock is this engine and its accessories, mainly like the the valve cover. Like it looks okay, but it's it's just shaped really funny, really pyramid and really tiny as compared to here's a, another AMT 125th scale. 409 engine like I think the, the one on the left just looks more appropriate for a big block Chevy and then another thing there is the exhaust these headers they're so darn tiny and not to scale appropriate like if you measure them out and scale them up those the primaries are like an inch and an eighth but this main main collector tube is an inch and three eighths, which is like smaller or the same size as most primary header pipes, let alone trying to run a blown big block race engine through. It's a little, a little ridiculous. And then they're also like two-dimensional, very thin, flat. So that really has me hung up is what to do kind of like you cracked one thing and then where do you stop like i was trying to stay inside a box stock but if i break that first box stock rule then i guess i'll i just start correcting a lot more so these are the kind of a stock style manifold and they definitely look much more appropriate these are the kit manifolds so i guess that's an option but I guess one question would be for anybody that does, you know, contest box stock. Not that I'm really trying to compete, but I want to stay in that, I don't know, territory if I can. Is there anything I can do to add size to this tube to make it look, I don't know, a little better, more appropriate, and still stay within a box stock category? Can I use sprue there? as a part of a pipe so any you guys familiar with doing box stock competitions or anything like that especially like a, a james tester i know he's a box stock wizard but uh there's the only thing i can think of is maybe putting a sprue in there and to give it a little more size and look a little better 
Got a lot of our chrome dechromed. Gonna go with this 54 grill. And I think I am gonna paint most of this, kind of going with that military coloring. But we'll probably chrome up the blower again and go from there. Um, let's see. I think that about does it for this project. So we're about ready for paint on the frame. And then we can get that into a, kind of a rolling chassis setup and then start banging out the body. But let me uh, reset here and we'll go over the next project. All right, now we'll talk about an upcoming build. And that's just around the corner with the Build of Gentlemen, hosted by Paul over at Styrene Relics. And I figure we could do a little bench race in here, if you will. Shout out to Luca and Fred's podcast. I haven't completely committed to a kit, and I pulled out the ones that kind of qualify within the years. And again, we'll just do some bench racing and we'll talk them out. First up, we're gonna go, we're gonna go oldest to newest that I have as far as vehicle year that fit in the, the rules. And the first up is a 23T delivery van. Not exactly my first choice for a a racer, but uh Maybe some of you guys have an idea out there. I'm certainly not opposed to a, a long roof, like a wagon or a delivery van. But, uh, yeah. Not exactly a racer, but let me know. It does fit the year. Up next, kind of a, a venerable hot rod, classic 29 Model A Roadster. Ideally, I was looking for a 23 to 25, like, T-bucket that I wanted to build, but... Wasn't able to come up with anything yet, so maybe next year. But back to this one, the 29. It's kind of already set up for the most part, as long as you choose your engine options wisely. Some of these uh, chrome parts and whatnot would uh, really stretch the rules there. And you know, originally intended to build this blown high boy. I really like like the high boys, but I can always acquire another one, right? And up next is a 32 Chevy Cabriolet. Nice looking 32. Certainly my favorite looking 32 is the Chevy over the Ford when it comes to stock. But again, once they get chopped up and hot rodded, anything goes. This one's got a little 194 six cylinder in it. Certainly wouldn't be underpowered for a little guy, but... Again, I picked this kit up to go along with my Gangbusters cars. I guess those are two other ones that would make the year deadline, but a little big for racers, the Lincoln and the Chrysler Imperial. But uh, up next, 34 Ford pickup. This was kind of like my initial thought on doing a, on a race vehicle for this build. One that certainly meets the criteria could I come up with a hot rodded version? It's got the Ford flathead in it. If I did it, I'd likely uh, lop the roof off, kind of make it an open roadster pickup. Maybe just a little shorty windshield on it. You know, fenders to be determined. But uh, there's that one. Certainly a good choice, in my opinion. Let me know what you think of that. And now we're kind of getting out of those. Real old looking cars and into the bubble fender era. And that is the 37 Chevy Cabriolet, which is actually currently my leader in uh, options. This has the Stove Bolt 6 in it. I recently did a box opening on it to show off what's inside, as this is again my leading subject for the build. And Kind of looking back here, that vintage rod starts to give you some of that old school vibes. And 37 fits in the 1940 vehicle window. And speaking of 1940, everybody's got to have one of these, right? And that's a 40 Ford. Just kind of a, a staple in the hot rodding world. So that's certainly an option. I haven't been into this one to really figure out what it's got in for an engine. I assume it's got to have a flathead by the picture there. So 
certainly a cool option as well. So right now, if anything, it'd be the 34 Ford pickup and the 37 Chevy and possibly that 40 Ford. Although these bubble fenders feel a little feel a little outside the the race of gentlemen, but they do fit within Paul's rules. So let me know what you think, what you guys have, and uh, we'll move on to a stash ads. And finally made it to the stash ad portion. Uh, these stash ads obviously come from some purchases, but I've been doing a lot of trading, trying to trade up into more desirable kits that I'm after. So if you'd like to check out any of that, make sure you uh, check out my Facebook. Here's a quick little picture of what I've got up, and I have a list of what I'm after over there. So if you're interested in doing any of that, you can go find me there, and my Facebook is in the description. But uh, we'll start off with some resins. First up is a 2829 Ford Phantom A bucket. This would have certainly fit into the build of gentlemen if resin bodies were allowed. So there's one of Paul's rules, no big deal. But nice little kind of roadster pickup thing going on here. The body portion of this one looks really nice. Kind of minimal cleanup. And you got a good body. The bed, on the other hand, is pretty poorly done, in my opinion. I'm very kind of uh, undecisive on resins right now. After seeing some of this stuff, kind of see the seams there. And that there. It's just like if you had spent another day on the Master, you could have had a whole lot better product. Especially when you get into the inside, like these. Joints and seams are crooked. Not everything's showing up on camera, but over here, like wavy bed lines. That inner seam is all rough and uneven. But I guess that is what it is when you get resin. You know what you're getting before you buy it. So kind of back and forth on them. They offer some some cool subjects for sure. And another one of those subjects that would have fit into the group build, I guess, is a 34 Ford Phantom panel. I like my panels and wagons, so this one certainly caught my eye. Pretty cool looking rod there. Could certainly make something look awfully mean with that. There's that guy. That one doesn't look too bad. A little, a little soft on edges, but overall... I am satisfied with it. And this resin actually comes via trade from Monty Davis. So again, if you want to trade, hit me up. Uh, I like my wagons, and he happened to have a resin wagon that I could trade into. This one doesn't look too bad. And by the, the trim styling, looks like it takes the Revels kit. It certainly does have its its work cut out. As you can see, it's kind of air pitted there, but I think we can smooth that all up, clean up some door lines and some trim, and I think we'll have a cool looking 58 wagon. And I know that there is a 58 delivery out there too. I think the delivery takes the AMT kit and this one takes the Ravel kit. So this one will be, I don't know, I might start on this one slowly. And try to get her done as soon as I can. It'll probably be a six month project trying to clean everything up to the way I want it and trying to acquire a Ravel 58 kit is another job in and of itself. I mean, I do have one, but I'd like to keep that as the actual car. And we'll move on to the actual kits. This first up was a trade. This was supposed to be a Ravel Camaro. I don't know. It kind of got screwed up in translation. He showed me the yellow box Ravel Camaro. And then said he had another one that was still new in the bags. That he was going to send me instead. Because he knew it was complete where the other one was out of the bags. And wasn't confident it was complete. And so I got this one. 
And it was a surprise when it showed up as an AMT kit. Because there is a Fast and Furious Revell kit. So, I don't know, I guess miscommunication. Didn't know what was coming on. But uh, there's that. I guess if anybody wants this kit, it is surely open for trade if you want. There is no decals either. So, there's that. So, moving on up. Another part of that trade, though, that I am happy with is the 70 Chevelle Baldwin motion car from Ravel. If you know me, you started to learn that I do love my dealer option to hot rods, like Baldwin Motion, Yanko, Tasca, Nikki Chevrolet, all of the above. So I was happy to acquire this one and look forward to getting this one done up. And moving on. You guys might uh, hear kind of some redundancy that I love wagons and long roofs. And here is another one. They come in via trade. 66 Chevelle wagon. Looks like a pretty cool looking kit. Nice wheels on it. And that big block Chevy under the hood. That should be a, a fun one to build up. And another one that come via trade, another YouTuber, Steven, over at Small Adventures, traded me into the 65 Plymouth Belvedere, kind of a cool little bare bones Plymouth, makes for a cool old school hot rod, and I look forward to checking out this Mobius kit. And staying in the YouTube family, this comes via our good buddy Neiman Chambers, Captain Nemo, 67 Camaro SS 2-in-1. This one is sealed. I had it on my to trade for list, but Neiman's trying to sell off a good portion of his collection. Wasn't looking to trade, but uh, we decided to help each other out, come up with a deal for a purchase because these do not come up too often and I had to jump at it when I could especially knowing where it came from you know it's it's an honest seller obviously so I'm happy to finally have one of these in my hands and to go along with that one is the other 67 the Nikki Camaro again that dealer hot rod this was super high on my list to get this one's opened outside, but sealed inside. Looks like a good looking kit. And I'm definitely pumped to have this one. This was definitely the, the, uh, the unicorn of the dealer cars that I know of. So uh, now that I have it, I am ecstatic about that. I'll move into another acquisition and kind of continuing on that dealer stuff. Russ Davis Ford, kind of an iconic Thunderbolt. Yes, it's a Ford, but it's a it's a pretty badass Ford. You know it when they have the, the teardrop hood scoop and missing a couple of headlights, that it means business. And another a race car, 65 Plymouth. Yes, another 65 Plymouth, but this one's got a little bit more going on with it. That is a sweet looking missile with that cross ram hemi under the hood. That should be a fun, fun kit. It would be even a funner car to drive. But, uh, moving on from there. Speaking of fun cars to drive, yet another Plymouth, another 65 Plymouth. This one's a little bit different. We got a factory altered wheelbase. Kind of that factory or dealer option thing. Just, I don't know, it's so cool to see. Finally got my hands on this one in the repop. I missed out on the first shot and they started climbing up in price immediately. So when I seen these come out, I had to make sure I got one. I'd like to get two and do both versions, but uh, that is up in the air yet. It'd be cool to do, again, both versions with the injected or carbureted. But it's hard to beat an AFX car, that's for sure. 
in continuing on with 60s racers the ram chargers dragster and transport truck this is just a cool cool combo with the kind of diora style transporter so this ought to be a super cool combo i'm excited about that how cool is that but uh I'll likely do a box opening on this one if you guys would like to see that do a box opening on most of these let me know which ones you want to see first and last but not least i picked up a bill cushionberry silhouette i do believe this is the original release comes with the silhouette car and trailer love a bubble top it's very cool that this is called a three-in-one it's interesting that you can get three versions of such a unique show rod but that drag car looks pretty cool with the blown engine this kit is kind of partially built there's some things put together but for the most part it's uh usable and what's even cooler about this one this is an ebay win i got it for like 30 bucks it came with a second one how cool is that it was a great score in my opinion not that i necessarily need to do two but it is a three in one so certainly have options there and nonetheless i should be able to complete one pair for sure and always have some uh Kind of spare bubble tops and seating seating pods i figured nonetheless i can make my own cool little custom but it's pretty crazy to get like i said i do believe these are the original releases of these guys so it was cool not only to get one but two at the same time for virtually the price of one so that was wicked cool i'm wicked happy about that like I said, that'll do it for this video. If you guys made it to the end, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, and check out the Facebook if you want to do any trading. Thanks.